Ah, punctures, they're everyone's worst nightmare, particularly during a race, unless of course you're looking for an excuse to stop. But a question I've heard time and time again, which is quicker to fix and replace, a clincher or a tubular? Well, I think it's time we found out for you. Okay, picture this, it's race day and you hear that dreaded it's time to jump off your bike and fix that tire. Now, we're gonna assume you don't already have a sealant in the tire, otherwise you probably wouldn't have got a puncher in the first place. And we're not gonna bother with something like a pit stop or other sealant. We're gonna go for a full replacement and repair. And after all, if you are doing a long distance event, it's probably the better solution in the long run, even if it does take longer repairing at the time. So today I'm gonna to tie myself repairing a clincher tire with a full replacement of the inner tube within the tire. And then I'm gonna tie myself repairing a tubular tire with a full replacement of the tire. And I have to be honest, I have no idea which way this is gonna go. So let's get stuck in, first of all, with the clincher tire. Right, so you've got a puncture on your clincher tire. First things first, just have a little check over the tire to make sure there isn't anything obvious sticking out. Then it's a case of removing the wheel to get on with the repair. And for this, I've got a spare inner tube with a valve extender already installed because I'm running deep section wheels. Now, I've got it already installed so I don't have to waste time removing the extender from my previous tube and then installing on here. I've then got a set of tire levers for removing the tire and then for inflating the tire, I've got a CO2 canister and an inflator already screwed on, ready to screw on and pierce the CO2 canister. Now, next step is to remove the tire and this is where the tire levers come in. Now this can actually be one of the trickiest parts. Uh, the bead can be quite tight and hard to remove and pull over the wheel. So my top tip for this is to actually push the bead into the middle of the wheel. This just relieves the tension around the tire. Um, once you've finally got the tire off, then you can start removing the tube. So you can start pulling it out off one side of the wheel and then actually run your finger around the inside of the wheel just to make sure that there isn't anything obvious that has caused the puncture and you might need to remove. Otherwise, you'll be left with another puncture straight after. And then install your new tube. Now, if it is a brand new tube, I suggest just putting a little bit of air in, and you can do that actually by mouth. So just un undo the valve and then just blow into it, put a little bit of air in there, and then install the valve through the hole and opening in the wheel and run the tube round, and then start pulling the tire back on. Now for the inflation, with the CO2 canister. So now you want to pierce the CO2 canister by screwing on the inflator. And a lot of these inflators, they actually have a control button, so it won't actually release the CO2 straight away. But if you haven't got that, then you're gonna to need to be ready to put this onto the wheel or onto the valve. So you're gonna want it actually on the valve already as you screw it on. In my case, I can screw it on and then put it on and release the valve and then inflate the tire. Right now, you've got a puncture on a tubular tire. Firstly, whereas on the clinch tire, we need to check over the tire to see if there's anything sticking out. Don't need to bother with a tubular tire because we are going for a full replacement. And another thing to note is that when you do get a puncture on a tubular tire, say you're about a kilometre or so away from transition, you can actually ride a tubular tire on when it's flat more easily than you can with a clincher tire, though to an extent, and it could damage the wheel, so it's not fully advised. Um, for this repair, I'm gonna need a tubular tire, a spare tubular tire, and again, I've opted for a valve extender already installed, so save time. Um, and it is advised that you go for one that's pre-glued, so sort of the tackiness, sort of they stick to each other, the wheel and the tire. And then we've got the a CO2 canister with an inflator again. So as I've done already, I've taken the front wheel off, and now it's a case of a lot of brute strength to get the tubular tire off the wheel. It's been glued on securely for a reason, so it's going to be pretty hard to get off. I opted for rocking it backwards and forwards and eventually being able to prise it off and pull it off. And then I started to install the new tubular tyre. And again, the latter stages of this, trying to install it, can be hard, but really just work hard to pull it on. And then it's a case of lining the tyre up, so making sure it's nice and central to the rim 
and then get your CO2 canister out, install it onto the valve and then turn the CO2 canister so it starts releasing the CO2 and there you go, an inflated tyre. Right, we've come back inside and analysed the results. Now we recorded the time from the moment that I got a puncture and rolled in and then we stopped the clock once the wheel was back on the bike and I was ready to roll away. Uh, we did that basically because, well, that's a real case scenario. Scores on the door, clincher tyre, four minutes and 18 seconds. Tubular tyre, five minutes and one second. And it is worth noting that I'm pretty well rehearsed in repairing and, well, replacing a clincher tyre. Um, whereas not so much with a tubular tyre. I have a little bit of experience, but nowhere near as much with the clincher tyre. So there's possibly a little bit of time to be saved again with a tubular tyre. Um, let's explain things a little bit, pros and cons to each. Um, clincher tyre, um, you can obviously replace the tube and then you're good to go. Even after the race, you can leave that tube in the wheel. Whereas with a tubular tyre, because it is essentially a quick replacement, you're not allowing the glue to bond and set properly, um, you will still need to replace the tubular after the race. Pros to the tubular though is that you can ride on a tubular tyre a little more easily and more safely than you can on a flat clincher tyre. So say you have got a kilometre or so left, as I mentioned earlier, you could ride in for the last bit of the race without having to replace the tubular tyre, uh, which is a big plus. Um, you can also get pinch flats on clincher tyres, so if you're rushing, which probably going to be in the middle of a race, well, you can't do that on the tubular tyre. Uh, though you did witness me working pretty hard to get the tubular tyre off, so that does take a bit of practice, um, and you've basically got to be prepared for that. Um, a little bit more straightforward with the clincher tyre. I have, have heard tubular tyres can be quicker when you're well practiced in it and possibly you've prepped things a little more. Um, so I'll definitely be interested to try out repairing a tubular tire a bit more in the future. For me, I personally really like clincher tires just because when I'm traveling for racing, particularly if I'm away for a few weeks um, before a race, I can ride a set of training tires and then quickly change over to a set of race tires just before the race. That's not so easy with a tubular wheel set or tires. Um, so yeah, clinch tire for me, um, but the results were really interesting. Now, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to GTN. And if you'd like to see how to repair a clincher tire on race day a bit more thoroughly, you can see a video just here. And if you'd like to see something slightly different, another versus between flat pedals and clipless pedals, you can see that by clicking down here.